Hey, welcome to this uh, quick pitch uh, breaking news update. Uh, we're joined by Rich Southwell, the lead plaintiff in the Southwell versus McKee and others, a uh, school mask mandate law uh, lawsuit. Rich, welcome back in the dugout. I see you're literally in the dugout. I am indeed. Good to be here. I'm stunned. Uh, there was a settlement. There was a, what sounded like a very reasonable sell, settlement offered today, but the, the Department of Health, the state of Rhode Island, the Attorney General's office rejected it. Tell us what happened at the courthouse today, Rich. Well, first of all, let's go back about a month to February when we were uh, in court and that hearing immediately went to chambers. They spent about 90 minutes in there. And that's when the settlement idea first uh, was floated by Judge Lanfear. And uh, we agreed well, to keep it confidential just so nobody got spooked. Um, but we're able to you know, talk about it publicly today. So again, going back to February, Judge Lanfear had suggested, kind of put out a suggested framework for a settlement that would involve nothing more than the Department of Health going through the normal process to establish a permanent regulation regarding school masks and then actually follow that process when and if you, know, you need to invoke the, the regulation. So basically going back to what we've always done prior to COVID. Let me make just quick points. You weren't looking for an admission of guilt or wrongdoing in imposing the mask mandates without any such process or scientific evidence looking backwards, right? There was no, none of that, right? None of that, not even an was, apology. Not even an apology. It was all forward looking like, hey, next time, don't do this again. Don't right. hide stuff and do it in the secret back room decision. Do it transparently. Go through a process. Let's have some debate on it, scientific debate with whoever, and, and go through a, a process. That was basically the offer, right? No, no right. apology or anything negative. No. Uh, and they said point, no. Completely forward looking and basically following statutes that already exist. And so the quandary that they find themselves in, it, they would have been much better to have admitted a mistake a long time ago than continue stonewalling. Like this is not helping their credibility. The science on you know, masking populations and masking school children continues to age very, very poorly for them. You know, if they don't go back to normal and put a, a you know a regular a, a permanent regulation in place where they actually draft up under what circumstances do we mask and um, you know you actually have to write things down and write the regulation. But if they don't do that and this is allowed to persist the way it's going, they can declare an emergency yeah. next August for something else and go through the exact same. You know, declare an emergency, did. declare a mandate, and they can and do they it all are. in secret, and and everybody has to comply. So, what does happen next in the lawsuit? Is the, so so uh, there was some mention I heard of of maybe mediation, but if not mediation, the discovery process will proceed, right? Yeah, so that's a good uh, that's a good point. So, if you don't want to sit down and settle lawyer to lawyer, well, perhaps we could put a mediator in the middle, and then both sides you know, both attorneys for both sides would have to bring the decision makers into the room to participate in that. So that would be me and potentially a couple of the other plaintiffs representing all. And then, you know, they'd have to bring in somebody from the governor's office, a very senior person from the governor's office with the power to sign off and someone very senior from Rido with the power to sign off on an agreement. And so that's not a popular option for, uh, for the state either. Because uh, they, you know, as much as they don't want to settle, they definitely don't want to put this into the hands of a, of a mediator where they've got to bring, you know, senior government officials in to, to actually work out the problem. So that's kind of a non-starter for them. Um, but it was proposed or suggested by the judge, like, is that a better alternative? For us, we're fine. Uh, for them, not so much. If you have public hearings, you're going to get every subject matter expert from around this country who's anti-mask jumping into those public hearings and it will be a bloodbath for Rido. I mean, they'll as as much credibility as they've lost now, they'll have like negative credibility when this all, you know, when that gets done, when when that happens. And you're going to get national news coverage. That's an embarrassment for the state. And frankly, that'll be a, an embarrassment for the CDC, who's probably calling the yeah. shots or at least influencing decision making. Yeah. So just a, a quick uh, calendar of next steps. So one week from Monday, uh, there will be an attorneys only meeting. The judge kind of ended today's meeting by telling the state, why don't you go back and ask your clients again? Just, just a thought, right. try again, see if you can do it. Right. Yeah. Um, they'll have that. And then if that doesn't go anywhere, then the judge is ready to start hearing. Uh, so a week from arguments. Monday, 
a week, week from, Monday? from Monday. Yeah. So right. 10 days or whatever it is. Yep. Um, and then if that fails the very next day, that Tuesday, uh, the judge will start hearing uh, discovery motions from both sides. So, wow. you know, he's, he's ready to, ready to move forward if uh, we can't get this thing settled, which is, that's great news. All right, Rich. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Mike. Take care.